the poignancy of a final image is the subject of this countdown of 10 photographs taken before death. Number 10. Elisa Lam. 21-year-old Elisa Lam was last seen alive in the security camera footage from the lifts of the Cecil Hotel, Los Angeles. After Lam fails to make her daily phone call home, she is reported missing by her parents. Reviewing the hotel's camera footage, Lam is seen to be behaving bizarrely in the hotel's lift. When hotel guests begin to complain about discolored, foul-smelling water, employees are sent to examine the water systems on the hotel's roof. Lam's naked body is found floating in the tank. The county coroner was unable to determine a cause of death, and the bizarre final image of Elisa Lam and her shocking discovery remains a mystery to this day. Number 9 Reynaldo Dagza. Reynaldo Dagza, a Filipino politician, takes a photograph of his family outside their home on New Year's Day. Shots ring out, and Dagza collapses on the ground with gunshot wounds to his arm and chest. Rushed to a nearby hospital, he is pronounced dead on arrival. Only when the photograph is seen by his grieving family does it become apparent that the gunman who fired the final shots has been captured on camera, staring coldly down the barrel of a gun that took Reynaldo Dagza's life. The police recognise the man as a local criminal, out to seek revenge on Dagza for being injured in a shootout at which Dagza was present. He is immediately arrested and charged with murder. Number 8 Joseph Avery. This final photograph captures Joseph Avery in 1853. Boating on the Niagara with two friends, they are soon overcome by the power of the river, and his two friends are pulled from the boat and carried over the falls. Avery manages to grab hold of a log lodged between two rocks, but is ultimately stranded, his fate sealed. Onlookers attempt a number of rescues, all of which end in failure. After an 18-hour ordeal, he finally gives up the fight and is pulled over the falls to his death. Number 7. R. Bud Dwyer Politician Bud Dwyer was convicted in 1986 of taking a bribe from a Californian accounting company. On the day before he was due to be sentenced, Dwyer calls a press conference. The room is full of reporters expecting a resignation statement. But after a long speech protesting his innocence and denouncing the justice system, Dwyer hands out three envelopes to colleagues. The first, a letter to the Pennsylvania governor. The second, a donor card. And the third, a suicide note to his wife. Taking a gun from the manila envelope in his briefcase, R. Bud Dwyer shoots himself on live television. In 2010, the key witness, whose testimony was critical to Dwyer's conviction, admitted lying under oath to reduce the severity of his own sentence. Number 6. Carl Williams Carl Williams was a convicted murderer and drugs trafficker, making obvious enemies along the way. But it wasn't until his incarceration in Barwon, Australia's maximum security prison, that his chickens finally came home to roost. Prison security cameras capture fellow inmate Matthew Johnson taking the leg of a nearby exercise bike and striking a fatal blow to Williams' head, allegedly as punishment for Williams turning informant and striking a deal with the assistant commissioner. Williams' body lies in a nameless plot without a headstone. Number 5. Pavel Kashin. Russian freerunner Pavel Kashin was in the prime of his life when this tragic moment was captured in the summer of 2013. Mistakes happen, even amongst the fittest and most disciplined of athletes, but when they occur on the landing of a backflip on the very edge of a 16-storey building, it's likely to be the last trick you'll ever perform. Number 4. 
Regina K. Walters. Robert Benrose was a long-haul trucker who kept a torture dungeon in the cab of his vehicle. The police believed Rhodes held his victims captive for about a week before shooting them and disposing of the body. Rhodes was arrested when an Arizona state trooper examined the parked-up truck and discovered Rose inside his cab with a shackled, naked teenager. When his apartment was searched after his arrest, the final photograph that would be taken of 14-year-old Regina K. Walters was unearthed. In an abandoned barn, Rhodes cut off the girl's hair and forced her to wear a black dress and heels. Regina Walters' body was discovered months later, and Robert Ben Rose awaits the death penalty. Number 3. The McQuilkin Brothers Michael McQuilkin and his younger brother Sean posed for a photograph on top of Motto Rock, California, in 1975. The weather began to worsen, and when their hair began to stand on end, their sister took this photograph with her Instamatic camera. On leaving the summit, the temperature suddenly dropped and it began to hail. The ring on the older brother's right hand began to buzz. The family were engulfed in a white, searing light. There was a sense of weightlessness, of time slowing down. And then the lightning struck. Sean had been struck by lightning and lay collapsed unconscious, smoke pouring from his back. He was carried down the mountain by his brother to receive treatment to his third degree burns, passing along the way a woman desperately giving emergency first aid to her husband who had the smallest of burn marks near his heart. Sean McQuilkin went on to recover from his injuries, but the man at the foot of the mountain wasn't so fortunate. Number 2. James Bulger The worst nightmare of every parent is to lose a child at a shopping mall, and the parents of two-year-old James Bulger suffered just that in February 1993. The mall's security cameras showed two males leading him quickly outside, and proved to be the last haunting image of James Bulger in his tragically short life. Led down to the Leeds and Liverpool Canal, James was systematically beaten and tortured, his body finally being dumped on the railway line for a passing train to add to the outrage. Mercifully, he died long before the impact. When an enhanced still from the video was released to the public, the two abductors were recognised as Robert Thompson and John Venables. 10-year-old classmates at the local junior school. The pair were charged and spent the rest of their childhood behind bars. The interviewing police officer later said of one of the boys, I didn't look for three sixes on the back of his head, but at that moment I thought he was the devil. Number 1. The Engineers Questions are being asked about the safety of wind turbines, as recent figures suggest that the numbers that catch a light each year is ten times higher than the industry admits. It was the fateful misfortune of two Dutch engineers to be stranded 200 feet from the ground when a fire broke out in the generator behind them, blocking off the exit tower. The engineer's final photograph captures them in an embrace two souls brought together by the dreadful realisation that they were facing their final moments in life. As the raging fire eats its way through the plastic hull on which they stand, they each decide their own fate. One engineer leaps from the tip of the turbine to meet his death in the wet grass 200 feet below him. The other braves the inferno in an impossible attempt to descend the ladders of the melting tower. His body is discovered at the top of the ladder when the fire is finally brought under control. A poignant final image that reminds us that although we must each face the final walk alone, the path is shared between us all, bound together as we are by the tragedy of the human condition. <laughs>